Hi, this is problem 14 from the 2016 AIM-2. A good example of a solid geometry problem and a few critical steps that are common to these types of problems. So let's see what we have. Equilateral triangle ABC has side length 600 and points P and Q lie outside the plane of ABC and are on opposite sides of the plane. And furthermore, point P is equidistant from A, B, and C. Q is equidistant from A, B, and C and the planes PAB, QAB form a 120 degree angle. And there is a point O whose distance from each of these five points is the same distance D. Find the distance D. Okay, so we have a solid geometry problem here that involves an equilateral triangle ABC that has a side length of 600. And I see right away an opportunity to simplify this problem a little bit it looks like all these distances are going to scale with the side length. So there's really no need to carry around these two extra zeros. So let's just assume that the uh, triangle ABC has side length 6, and we'll add these two zeros back at the very end. So that should make things a little bit easier. So let's call uh, ABC having side length 6. Now we have points P and Q that lie outside the plane of ABC. So let's assume P is above the plane of ABC and Q is below the plane of ABC. And it looks like P is equidistant from A, B, and C. Q is equidistant from A, B, and C. And it looks like the only way that can happen is for P and Q to lie along a line that runs perpendicular and through the center of this triangle. That's the only way to satisfy the symmetry of being equidistant from the three vertices of the equilateral triangle. So that's pretty handy. And it looks like we have point O, which is equidistant from all five points. So by the same logic, O has to also lie on that line that's perpendicular and running through the center of the triangle. So it looks like uh, this triangle and its dimensions are going to come into play here. So let's work those out. We have that uh, segment BM is just one half the side length. We have the altitude of the equilateral triangle is 3 radical 3. It's broken up into the ratios of 1 to 2 to give these distances. And it looks as though the critical cross section that we need to identify is the cross section plane that runs through line segment CM and also contains this perpendicular line segment running through the center of the triangle. That's going to contain all the important points that we need to identify. So uh, let's try to draw that out. We have line segment CM. And uh, let's break that up into the ratio of 1 to 2, approximately. And we have the line segment PQ running through that. And that forms a lopsided kite, shown. And it looks like we have a point O that's going to be equidistant from P, C, and Q. Let's draw those line segments in and identify the distance D. Now, O to Q is also the distance D, and it looks like it's broken up into two parts here. So let's just write that out. There's part x and d minus x. And the base cm, we know from before, that's uh, 2 radical 3 and radical 3. And we're also told that this angle, qmp, is 120 degrees. And uh, we don't know what these smaller angles are, theta 1, theta 2. But we do know that uh, theta 1 plus theta 2 is 120 degrees. So that looks pretty helpful now. So let's see if we can try to uh, connect some of this information. So one of the things I always like to do is if I see a Pythagorean relationship, I always try to write that down and see if I can use it later. So I see a Pythagorean relationship here for triangle CO, whatever that point is. And we can write d squared in terms of these two side lengths d squared is equal to x squared plus 2 radical 3 squared is a 12. So that looks like it'll come in handy at some point. Now I see another case where 
we have uh, two angles, theta 1 and theta 2. We don't know what they are, but we know what their sum is. And we can write the tangent of theta 1 in terms of these line ratios and the tangent of theta 2 in terms of these line ratios. So that's the hallmark signal for using the sum tangent uh, angle formula. That uh, tan theta 1 plus theta 2 is the sum of the tangents divided by 1 minus the product of the tangents. Formula that comes up uh, quite a bit in both the AIM and the AMC. So let's see if we can use this now. Tangent theta 1 is uh, d plus x divided by root 3. Tangent theta 2 is d minus x divided by root 3. So that already looks very encouraging. 1 minus the product, d plus x times d minus x is d squared minus x squared. Root 3, root 3 is just 3. And this looks very encouraging now, because I see that the x's cancel in the numerator. And we know that d squared minus x squared is just given by 12. So let's substitute that in now. And we find that uh, the tangent of 120 degrees, that's just the same as the tangent of minus the tangent of 60 degrees. We know what that is. That's uh, minus root 3. And let's see, this works out to 2d root 3. This is 12 divided by 3 subtracted from 1. And this looks very, very good now. So we can uh, reduce this to find that uh, 9 is equal to 2 times d. And d is equal to 4.5. And if we add back our two zeros, this translates to a d of 450. And that's our final answer. So uh, let's review some of the critical steps that are common to these and other such problems. One critical step is to try to identify uh, some scaling that can simplify the geometry, in this case, dropping the two zeros. And second, we needed to identify the critical cross-section to reduce this solid geometry problem into a two-dimensional geometry problem. And after that, you pretty much have to write whatever connections you can find to try to solve for the unknown. And uh, that's where it gets a bit creative, but uh, these first two steps are often very critical to try to reduce this to a manageable form. So hope that was helpful, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.